<laughs> hey guys, I'm Aaron with Alien Knives. Welcome back to my channel. So previously on the channel, I taught you guys how to hand forge a sand mai billet. Sand mai has three layers, a, a center cutting layer and then two outer cladding layers like this. And it, it makes some pretty striking patterns that are cool to look at. Uh, a go mai billet would be five layers. That would be two outer layers and a core layer here, which makes five layers. And then a QMI billet is your five layer billet, but your two internal layers are intermixed with copper. That's what I'm gonna teach you how to do tonight. But the difference between this video and all the other videos on YouTube right now about QMI is I'm gonna do it wildly different than everybody else. I have a theory in my mind that should work. I've never tried it. I'm gonna run you through the paces and you're gonna find out that if this works, this is a much easier method than how everybody else is doing it. There is another guy that's a good buddy of mine right now. His name is Dennis over at Tyrell Knife Works. He just did a video how to make this QMI. He's got, you know, a really nice forge press and stuff like that. I don't have any of that stuff. So I'm, if this project doesn't work the way I'm going to try it tonight with a hammer, then I'm going to move on to trying it a different way. I think this will work and I think it'll create some striking patterns. So stick around. Let's see what happens. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this and flatten it out. And then I'm going to take these and I'm going to take them to the grinder and I'm going to take all my pieces and get them all cleaned up so I have nice fresh surfaces to work with. <coughs> okay. Now, up until now, everything in the video looks pretty normal to how everybody else is doing it. I've got a core layer and I've cleaned up both sides. I've ground both sides clean of the mill scale and, and the pickling and stuff like that. So I have clean steel to work with. And I've taken my two outer layers and I've cleaned those up on the inside. That'll increase um, your ability to forge weld steel. To make a sand mai billet, you would do exactly that. You would clean up all your steels, you'll sandwich them together, tack weld them, and then you heat them to forge welding temperatures, you know, 2000 degrees and up, to get this material hot enough to where you can get the steel to laminate to itself. You can get those steels to laminate to each other and actually amalgamate and create one billet with, with no delaminations in between the layers. That's how you make sand mai and go mai and things like that. The difference with Q mai, and this is a test, we're going to see if this works, is that copper melts at about 1900 degrees. So what I've seen a lot of you guys doing out there, the guys who are posting videos, it, one way to do it would be to take your center layer, put your copper on both sides, put your outer layers on it, weld an airtight package all the way around and then get this to 2000 degrees or so and you guys are squishing this and making a more traditional style forged billet and some some of you are having difficulties because if you don't hit this perfectly you're squeezing out all that molten copper so some guys are saying, well, don't heat it to that temperature. You know, it only takes 1500 degrees to heat treat the steel. So keep it under 2000 degrees and, you know, forge these together to create a build that way. And you get your figure, you know, your cool figure like this through the forging process by, you know, squishing the materials in different directions to get those different figures. Now, my idea is completely different. I've cleaned my materials. I'm gonna put my copper in there and then I'm gonna heat it till that copper is completely molten, till it's turned to liquid. And then I'm just gonna gently squeeze these layers together and let it cool. And that should bond all my layers together. Now, that should work all by itself like that. 
But the thing is, is if I do that and I cut a knife out of it, I'm going to have a perfectly straight line of copper. It's not going to wander like I want it to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut different layers into my steel with my angle grinder. And all three of these, I'm just going to cut some different zigzag patterns and stuff like that in there. And then I'm going to put the copper in there, weld it up, and I'm going to heat this to 2100, 2200 degrees till that copper melts. And then I'm just going to squish it in a vise like that. Okay. And I think it's going to work. And when it, well, well, let's see. All right. So we're going to do the core layer first right here. I've just got my angle grinder set up here. We're going to do a core layer. There we go. Check that out. All right, so we got kind of a cross pattern there. I don't know if I went deep enough to actually do anything. We'll see. You know, I just kind of scored it with my angle grinder, did some zigzags, and then I did the same thing on these outer layers on the inside. Not on the outside, just the inside. I put some stuff there. Boom, boom. Um, let's go ahead and put our copper in there and weld this thing together. So I'm definitely going to still take all the same precautions as I normally would when I'm trying to forge weld, which means that I'm gonna make sure that all my pieces are clean with acetone. I forgot to grind the edges for my weld. If you don't grind your edges, then your weld won't really stick. You'll get a lot of spatter and stuff. So definitely clean up your edges before you try to weld it. Outer layer, copper, middle layer, Copper outer layer. Stack those together. We got our billet in the forge now. We're gonna let that forge just come up to heat. Let's cut it open. 
and see what's inside. Hopefully it worked. Look at that, the end piece looks like it worked pretty much flawlessly, even on the end. So let's cut into this billet and see what she looks like. couple things to talk about here guys because of the way that I did this by putting the layers together and just heating them to melt the copper and just lightly tapping it I didn't really forge it out so it didn't grow wider and it didn't grow longer so this is what I'm dealing with right here this is a really thick piece of material and uh, and it's kind of short I'm gonna build a dagger and I'm gonna build a dagger for more than one reason it's got the the cross-sectional density the thickness you need for for a, a dagger build because you really want it nice and stout in the middle and since these copper bands are nice and thick I want a really steep grind a really steep bevel so that the copper layer doesn't grow and show a big fat band on the on the bevel if I were to take something with a layer that thick and say I, I have a big billet with a layer that thick and I do a bowie knife and do a, a real tall flat grind that layer of copper would be really wide down the side of the knife and that's not really what I'm going for so if I was going to do a, a bigger bowie style knife I would want this layer to be much 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 thinner than what it is uh, maybe use the same piece of copper for a two inch wide billet the same copper pipe and just put a thin piece of copper in there and heat it and let it melt and just squish the whole thing together that would have worked out pretty good this is going to work out great for what I'm going to build it for I'm going to make a dagger out of this that's going to give me a really steep bevel grind to the center it's going to keep that copper band thin and I think the build's going to come out really nice I haven't ground out all these low spots because when I grind in my bevels, those will disappear anyway. Yeah, all this stuff around the edges that will all disappear. The only ones I have to truly worry about are the ones right down the center of the knife because I'm going to have a ridge down the center for my dagger. So a couple of these are going to break that ridge. I'm going to have to work out. But you know, if I orient the billet this way, I've got a nice flat all the way to here and my ridge will clear that. So um, my bevel will clear that and this will be in the tip area so I think that that's pretty good if I build the dagger on this side and make this the tang side that's hidden right here. You know this portion of the knife will be inside the handle and this will come out and it'll be a, a nice dagger. Overall the idea of just melting the copper between the layers it has worked really well. I got an incredible um, weld between the materials. This is really good. I'm not seeing any delaminations anywhere. Now the next question will be as I grind in my bevels here whether or not uh, cutting into these pieces of steel will relieve any cool designs. So you know I'm really looking forward to that and we'll see what happens.